So last Saturday I took the time to rank the supernovas from weakest to strongest. And this week I'm going to be ranking the warlord from weakest to strongest. Now in the supernova video there were a lot of comments of people giving their own ideas of their order for the supernovas and they were really all over the place. And I'm not saying that any of them were more right or wrong than others, it's just that a lot of them were so much different than mine and other people's opinion. I am going to make the assumption that this is due to the fact that there for one thing are more supernovas than Warlords, but also that we don't really know so much about any of their capabilities, and that the Warlord video I'm making now is going to be much more linear than that. I don't think too many of my ideas will be contested, and I'm sure that people who make their own will have similar ones to others. Also, just for the record, I will only be using the original seven that were there when the series started, so that is Miha, Kuma, Hancock, Crocodile, Dofi, Moria, and Jinbei. So without further ado, let's get into this shit. So at the very bottom of my list, the weakest of the Warlords, I have Gecko Moria. This guy really was in no way at all impressive to me. I don't even think he's really that close in power to the number six person on my list. If we're talking about his raw strength, then I mean, come on, that really was nothing. He pretty much was all Devil Fruit power and his subordinates were pretty decent too, I guess, in comparison to him. His Devil Fruit was definitely pretty decent, but I don't think he really used it well enough. It's like he has a Devil fruit where he's able to reanimate the dead but he just didn't utilize it properly because you know the whole idea with that is you need to make your undead army like a horde that attacks everyone at once but it was just like one at a time he'd send in little groups of dead people to try and take down the straw hats but that never worked it was either that or he would send one super powerful guy and that obviously didn't work either so yeah, overall, I don't think he was that good. I think his Devil Fruit was decent if it was in the hands of someone maybe more intelligent and maybe more physically powerful. It definitely could have been a force to be reckoned with, but for him, no, it just was not that good. And coming in at number six on my list, I have Crocodile. You know, honestly, I actually used to think that he was the weakest on the list. It made sense to me since, you know, he was the first warlord that they fought and beat. And they fought Crocodile only like a third of the way through the series if you're counting Moria's battle as like the end. And yeah, I was just pretty disappointed, honestly, by the fact that Crocodile got beat so easily. I mean, I guess, you know, you could say Luffy countered him with water or whatever, but no. If anyone would have had hockey, they would have just destroyed Crocodile by that logic anyway, so... Eh. And believe me, if anyone with hockey would have faced him, then he would have gotten completely destroyed because that would have been as powerful as the water counter. Then they would have had hockey, which would have been a huge advantage. When it really comes down to it, I think that's the huge problem with Crocodile and Moria. I don't think either of them have hockey. Really, I'm almost certain of it for Moria, and Crocodile, I feel like he doesn't, just because he was so taken aback by the fact that he was able to get hit when Luffy sprayed him with water. Now, the reason that I believe he might be stronger, he might actually have some hockey or something up his sleeve, is because he showed absolutely no fear when facing off against Dofi, and Dofi is a complete animal, so I think that he definitely either has an extreme amount of confidence for no reason, or he must have something up his sleeve. And that is the reason that I believe he is stronger than Moria. And coming in at number five on the list, I have Hancock. Now, it's really hard to place Hancock anywhere on this list because I'm very confused as to how strong her Devil Fruit actually is. See, at first, I thought it's probably not that good considering it didn't work on Luffy, and I know Luffy is a freak of nature, but I mean, okay, if it's possible that it doesn't work on some people, as long as they don't have some kind of provocative nature, I, I guess, then I would imagine people like, I, I don't know, Rayleigh, maybe Dofi, just people who aren't really human, I wouldn't think that it would work on them, but then what happened was, in Amazon Lily, she used it on three different women, and it worked. So I, I don't really understand completely how this ability works, what the condition is for it to work. Um, so I just kind of put it as like a medium level Devil Fruit. So with that, I'm mainly just assessing her physical power, which is pretty extreme, so it's not like it's that much of a loss that her Devil Fruit isn't considered extremely powerful by me. 
Her sisters versus Luffy pre time skiff gave him a pretty hard time, and my imagination leads me to believe that she is considerably more powerful than either of them. And in the War of the Best, she was shown a few times pretty much just completely annihilating any marine that got in her way. So while we were not able to see that much of her, and I wish we will see more of her in the future, I think that this is a pretty good place for her on the list at this point in time. And coming up next at number 4, right in the middle, we have Jinbei. It's hard for me to say exactly, but I would say that Jinbei and Hancock probably have about the same physical abilities. The difference being that for one thing, Jinbei doesn't have a devil fruit, so he can swim. And number two, uh, actually when he gets into water, he becomes way more powerful. which doesn't sound like it would be that useful, but One Piece is taking place in an archipelago world, so there is a considerable amount of water that he's going to be fighting on in the series. There's not too much to say about him. We all saw him in the War of the Best. He definitely wasn't really on offense, but he did a very, very good job of defending Luffy and just mainly supporting him throughout the battle. So, I think that number four is a perfect place for him on this. And at number three, we have the man, the myth, the legend, the king of Dressrosa, the heavenly demon, Doflamingo. I don't think anyone will seriously question this placement too hard. I would say both the people below him on this list are significantly weaker, and the people above him are significantly stronger. The guy is really just a complete monster, just his physical ability combined with his devil fruit, which if you've seen my top 5 Paramecia devil fruits, I believe is potentially actually the strongest devil fruit in the entire series. Considering the fact that his subordinates were less than useless, he pretty much took on the Straw Hat invasion entirely by himself, not even including all of the guys that he invited to the Colosseum that day. And it didn't hurt that both the Revolutionary Army showed up and he had Fujitora potentially making plays behind his back. And somehow, even during all of that, he was almost able to win. In fact, he really would have won if it wasn't for the fact that Luffy was getting helped out the ass. But that's enough praise for the greatest villain in One Piece history. Moving on to the number two slot, I have Bartholomew Kuma. It hurts me to put this guy above Dofi, especially because we don't have an unlimited amount of information on what he can do, but the thing is, the things that we do know he can do are pretty extreme. His Devil Fruit was also listed on my top 5 Paramecia Devil Fruits. It's just completely crazy. I'm not sure how many people he can actually use this on, but at least as far as pre-time skip Luffy, Zoro, and Sanji, he is able to just make contact with their bodies with his hand, and he can send them to any place in the world he desires. He is also apparently capable of deflecting any attack as long as he has his paw stop it. And we've seen that he has an enormous amount of brute speed and power, so... There's really not much to say about this guy, he just seems like a complete monster, no one can really stop him. Well, I shouldn't say no one, because there is actually one person left on this list who I think would completely annihilate anyone else on it, Dracul Mihawk. And judging by the comments on my last video, I'm not gonna have really any problem getting people to agree with me on this one. He's the indisputable, strongest swordsman in the world. It shouldn't be that hard for anyone to believe. On my last video, I made the horrible error. I, I don't really know how this happened, but for some reason when I was mentioning the power levels of Dofi and Kuma, I just completely completely forgot that Mihawk was a member of the Warlords, and I, I don't I don't know how this happened. I I, I can't explain it, it but it, it happened, and I said that Kuma was most likely the strongest of the Warlords, so I, I do apologize for that. I, I don't know what happened, okay guys? I'm sorry. After like three people commented telling me I was a complete moron, I commented myself saying that I, I fucked up, I know, there's not really anything I can do about it at that point, I'm not going to take down the video and repost it because that's what a pussy would do. So yeah, guys, this this is me fixing it, okay? Uh, Mihawk is stronger than Kuma, and Kuma is stronger than Dofi, so I hope you guys are happy. So that pretty much takes care of the list of the Seven Warlords, but one more thing for any returning subscribers, this might be useful information to you. You may or may not have noticed, but like six videos have been removed from my channel, two of them not by my choice and four of them by my choice. You see, 
yesterday I got a copyright strike for two different videos and I'm not saying I got two copyright strikes I don't really understand how it works uh, two videos considered to have copyright material equaled one copyright strike this was the why ace is the worst character video and the uh, what is one piece video so those were forcibly removed from my channel along with a copyright strike and I took down four other videos because they were going to get copyright striked if I didn't and that wouldn't be a big deal if it wasn't for the fact that if you get three copyright strikes in a three-month period then your channel gets taken down uh, and it's not like it gets taken down for some time. No, it's done. So, yeah, I, I took those down. But don't worry, they're going to be going back up, potentially in even a better form than they already were. Last Saturday, I was saying how I'm going to switch my schedule to Friday and Saturday uploads and try that out for a while. But first of all, I don't know if it's a complete coincidence or what, but that idea seemed to be a complete failure. So here's what I'm going to try to do for the future. Since I liked all of those videos that got taken down, I am simply going to remake them in a way that there is no copyright material, and I'm going to upload all of those on Fridays. Along with that, I will go back to my original Wednesday and Saturday uploads. So pretty much it's gonna work like this. We're gonna have a normal video on Wednesday. On Friday, I'm gonna post a video you guys have already seen before, but in a slightly different format. And then on Saturday, it's going to be another normal video. And there's only five videos that I have to actually re-upload. So after five weeks, I'm going to try my best to maintain the Wednesday, Friday, Saturday schedule. Although I am not making anything even close to a promise because I'm already having a hard enough time coming up with enough ideas for two videos a week. So I will test it out, but if I just cannot come up with enough material, then I, I'm sorry, I'm just gonna go back to a Wednesday, Saturday format. Although keeping that in mind, remember how much it would help me to leave me comments, giving me ideas of videos for the future. Let me know the good and the bad you thought was in this video, things I can improve on, things I should keep doing. If you did enjoy this video, remember to leave a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. Also, don't be afraid to share this video with your friends. Maybe if you have any popular forums or websites that you like to post things on, go ahead and do that. You don't even have to credit me or anything, just straight up upload it. I, I wouldn't care, that's fine, that's exposure for me. So yeah, let me know guys see what's going on, and I'll talk to you guys on Wednesday.